the string! Pull the string! Well, I'm not a video game guy. Never really was, you know, nothing against them or anything. Just not my bag of ships. You know, if I had to say I have some favorites of mine as a teenager, it's stuff like, you know, the Warriors, uh, Stunt Man, Manhunt, and that first Red Dead Revolver, I, th I think it was. But, you know, I haven't played a video game in well over 20 years. Unless you count the Corey Haim video game that was re-released. Um, check out my uh, video on that one next, why don't you? But um, that all being said, I am interested in video game history and whatnot. I find that pretty fascinating. And, you know, I was, of course, a fan of video game movies growing up, the, the few that we got. Like, I used to watch The Wizard all the time. And, well, you know, um, as, as that Nickelodeon show, you remember that? That Nickelodeon video game show? And I was also a huge fan, and I still am till this day, of the very first Mario Brothers movie, as well as the underrated Double Dragon, hell yeah. But... That's getting a bit off base, as those films are kind of, you know, based on video game properties, and not exactly like on video games as a construct, if you will. So, when they decided to mix video games and horror when I was a kid, well, I ate it up. And I can remember the first time seeing the trailer for Brain Scan. I think it was on, like, the um, Return of the Living Dead 3, uh, something like that. Uh, but I remember seeing the trailer for the first time, and it scared the hell out of me. I mean, it was pretty intense. It wasn't supposed to be real! Real, unreal, what's the difference? I didn't kill the man. I didn't even know him. You're in this now. You won't survive on your own. So when I saw it on the video store shelves, I snagged it up. Until this very day, it is one of my all-time favorite horror films. I mean, I even have the laser disc in a frame for some reason. So tonight, along with longtime contributor and buddy for life, Justin David. 555 five, five, Fear. Oh, I didn't see you there. We dive deep and pay proper respect to this beloved cult sci-fi horror flick, Brain Scan. Little Eddie Furlong, ooh. Edward Furlong, Frank Langella, and introducing T. Ryder Smith as the trickster. Brain scan. Let's kind of break down the horror scene in 1994. You know, I don't really get, you know, the argument that the 90s was somehow a bad time for horror. I mean, I, I, what I'm assuming when people say that is they're alluding to, like, the overhype from the slasher resurgence due to Scream. And, you know, of course, the films that spawned from that film's wake. You know, as if that's all that happened that decade. When, in fact, just a few years prior, we were ironically seeing the endings of certain legacy franchises. Where, you know, the proto-slasher of our dreams was seemingly finally being laid to rest. But more on Freddy in a little bit. And we would see legacy directors keep going with original horror. Movies like John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness. An original film that I think just gets better with time. But we can't forget one of the highlights in all of horror history as far as I'm concerned, which was the 90s growing video market, where we were also getting some great low budget horror across the board. You know, everybody was dipping their fingers in when it came to video store horror shells. And you know, we were smack dab in the rise of you know full moon pictures and whatnot as well. So quite the time. Along with home video production, you know, from companies like Republic Pictures, Apex, Dimension, you know, horror was in full swing. With the supposed final films of the Nightmare and Friday franchises, you know, it's it would be wise to find a replacement for the gloved one. Casting a furlong is kind of strange here, especially when you you read the some of the original scripts of Brain Scan. You can find uh, the third draft on Andrew Kevin Walker's website for free it's a pretty interesting read um, but you know before we get to that let me just break it down for you brain scan tells the story of horror obsessed teenager Michael who has a painful past and is left largely to his own devices as his father is always absent with the pressing of his buddy for life though you know through Fangoria magazine he uh, he arrives at the next level in horror gaming brain scan and when he plays the supposed game, he finds himself entangled in a real-life murder mystery with everyone he knows, loves, and fears getting involved. 
all at the forceful hand of a web-crawling video game rock and roll sci-fi monster, The Trickster. What's going on, Staunch Gang? Justin here. And thanks for having me on to talk about one of my personal favorite 90s horror movies, Brain Scan. This is a horror movie that I saw originally in the 90s that stuck with me ever since I saw it and I never forgot about it and I've watched it a billion times since then. Uh, of course, part of that being I just love Eddie Furlong and especially his 90s output. Speaking of which, be sure to check out our collaboration from last year's Staunch Ween, where we covered another little Eddie Furlong horror classic. You know, I too love his 90s stuff, especially his horror output. You know, stuff like Brain Scan, Pet Cemetery, too. But and we all know the most terrifying thing little Eddie Furlong ever did in the 90s was put out an album. Brain Scan has some strange origins. I mean, did you know that the dude that wrote 7 and 8 millimeter wrote this flick, Andrew Kevin Walker? Pretty badass. Even, you know, if his script was ultimately altered drastically. Versions of Brain Scan have existed since the early 80s, and it definitely shows when you read the, the one of the early screenplays. Like, like, here the character of Michael is 18 rather than, I think, like 16 or whatever. He's a little older, a little more mature. And his buddy for life, Kyle, he's the underage one, you know. And um, one of the more notable differences here uh, is that the brain scan discs in the film, well, in the original scripts, they were video cassettes. That's how old this shit is. You remember those old video games like you would get in a big box and you put the tape in and you, you play along with the TV? I'm guessing it was more along those lines. And also, the trickster character was just a staticky voice. Like, there was no physical presence. Not yet. You get a lot of derivative horror villains in the wake of Freddy's reign, you know? Um, not that I'm complaining, you know? Some of my favorite supernatural slashers to slice and dice their way in our hearts, well, I'm pretty sure you guys also agree that they are some of the best, you sick bastards. I'm talking supernatural slashers like I, Madman. And you know, things just kind of got better once sci-fi elements were inserted with stuff like the Rejuvenator, Hellmaster, that dude from Shocker, you know? And even a more grounded horror villain, slasher if you will, that ironically had more in common to do with Brain Scans the Trickster than I previously thought was of course, D. Snyder's Captain Howdy in Strangeland. But more on that some other time, be sure to subscribe. And honestly, you know, I, I can't help but think that the supernatural sci-fi take on the trickster was something that kind of ultimately led to the casting of little Eddie Furlong. I mean, this guy was fresh off of Terminator 2, and was a pretty big deal. You know, while I think he sleepwalks through the role here, he was also, you know, completely different than the original script's take on the character, as the Michael in that script was a cool dude, like a hard kind of aficionado, kind of cool... Guy, you just wanted to be his friend, you know? And in the film, he's like a subdued, half-awake weirdo. But Although, you know, I, I do think that Furlong, if anything, kind of adds to the film's weird atmosphere. I don't know. I mean, they really knocked it out of the park with the trickster regardless. We've never really had a villain quite like him. Most villains in slasher movies are usually silent killers like the Michael Myers and the Jason Voorhees. Trickster offered something different. He toyed with his victims. He was funny. He was fully animated and talked and he danced to Primus songs and all kinds of crazy shit. And I always found him to be one of the most unique villains in horror history. You must remember, like this was directly marketed to horror fans, literally with Fangoria magazine and whatnot, and like directly to the MTV general generation with the film's hot ass soundtrack seriously this thing rules we get some standout tracks from bands like pitch shifter mud honey butthole surfers primus tad old alcohol funny car and more as well as one of the best horror scores of the 90s seriously the thing about brain scan is it really is a unique film all around you know, the way it looks, you know, the, the, the score, everything about it. I mean, we get a real damp, subtle landscape here in the film, but also some pretty dark, you know, edge of your seat choices when it comes to the direction. Not your typical horror fanfare, if you will. And that's obviously due to the director, John Flynn, who is not a horror director. In fact, I think this is like his first and only horror film. And John Flynn, you know, he'd done multiple genre films, mainly like car stuff. He did that film Rolling Thunder, which side note, you know, Quentin Tarantino had his 
little production company in the 90s where he re-released films. It was called Rolling Thunder based on that film. So as much as John Flynn wanted to take on the production and whatnot, he didn't exactly have a fun time as the shooting schedule was very fast paced, you know, and, and the violence in the film kept having to be toned down and then it was brought back up. They didn't know what was going on, mainly due to the kids' ages and whatnot. And, you know, he even stated how much he hated working with little Eddie Furlong. You know, I can imagine at this time that he was kind of a little shit. So I, I can see why he would have hated working with them. <laughs> Flynn seemed eager to take on the production and the film has a seamless youthful energy to it. And it seems to have really been rooted in integrity when it came to the handling of the production and the quality of the film. And I mean, this is something I noticed as a kid. You know, Brain Scan really comes off as a kind of a classy horror movie compared to what we were getting at the time. Probably because Frank Langella was in the film. Another pretty big catch casting wise, you know? And here he's like the opposite of Furlong. He looks like he's having a great time. I think Brain Scan would make a great double bill with, you know, something like 976 Evil. A film that also involves a young nerd getting taken over by the power of technology or something. You know, while it's quite literal in 976 Evil as we get a full transformation from our big homie, we also get kind of the same thing happen in brain scan sort of as a deleted scene shows the the combining of the two of between uh you know little eddie furlong and the trickster they literally combine and twist together and mold and come together in this pretty badass prosthetic monster that i really wish they did not cut from the film Which brings me to my final point on Brain Scan. Why wasn't there any sequels? By the end of the film, however, I was sure of one thing. The producers hope the trickster will turn into a repeatable series character like those slasher superstars, Freddy and Jason. We're probably going to get the trickster returns, Brain Scan 2. I don't two. think we will. I think the film will not be successful. And uh, I'll tell you, I won't want to see it because mm. the trickster is one of the most repellent characters. But, you know, C. School and Ebert were right. I thought we were going to get more of the trickster. I mean, the premise is something that definitely could have been rehashed at least two or three times before people started to check out you know and then they could have kept going you recast the trickster maybe have like trickster versus lawnmower man take the trickster to outer space you know really beat him to the ground like any great horror villain should be i always hoped down the line that somehow some way we would get another brain scan movie another sequel it's set up in a way that you could have made a million of these unfortunately i don't think it did too well in the box office but you could have set this up for all kinds of different people all over getting copies of this game and told a bunch of stories and i wish they would have and that goes for several of my favorite horror movies we had killer clowns sam from trick or treat uh, dr giggles is a movie that i always wish got a sequel but in brain scan the second trickster comes on the screen you know you're having a good time with that shitty CGI as he materializes. Brain Scan is a standout genre film that exceeds expectations at every turn. A film that definitely stood the test of time and a film that will remain a unique gem from the 90s. This is a movie that I've seen a billion times and I'll watch a billion more. Uh, Staunch, thank you for having me on to talk a little bit about uh, one of my favorite horror movies. I'm glad you're covering this one. Uh, the folks are gonna love it. I, I love it. We all love Brain Scan. And shout out Eddie Furlong. The man's still hanging in there and uh, still kicking ass. So uh, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy staunch -oween. And I'll see you in the next one. Come hit me up on my channel, Justin David and the Dead Couch. And I think we're done here. Stay weird. Remember to always be yourself. And I will see you on the other side. Dude, stop hating on Feldman, but I'm very proud of you. Thanks for joining me for my brain scan video, buddy. Scene, I think. 14 takes. Eating the head each time. The neck is the tough part. The chicken feet. You can get past the feet, but the neck. Oh, don't dwell on that.